Guys, as you may know recently, there's been a lot of uh, hubbub about marketing campaigns based on beer cans recently. Oh, really? Some people are into it. Some people, are, some people aren't. Shark Tank billionaire Mark Cuban backs Bud Light over transgender controversy to say it's good business. Uh, I'm not so sure about that, Mark, not, from Cuba. Not if to you're, be like, honest, know anything about math. Because Bud Light has now lost his title as a top beer to Modelo, if I'm not mistaken. Hey. Anheuser-Busch plans to prop up their brand. Well, it didn't go so well when they tried to do it before. They kind of made a fucking error. Yeah. But at the same time, then somebody that worked for them came out and said that this whole thing was planned. You don't say. Now, wait a minute. Now, I had said this weeks ago. Now, it's easy to say that maybe this is just a cover. Oh, I was joking the whole time. That that kind of bullshit. Nope. That's possible. Nope. But I got to say, I think there's something a little more at work here than that. Oh, yeah. That. Weeks ago, I said they were a producer in it. Right. Exactly. But what exactly does that mean? Okay, so the first thing we need to know is what an ESG score is. The long and short of it is if you're a financial investment institution, an ESG score or at CEI, I think is the other one they uh -huh, call it. Uh -huh. These are non-financial reasons to financially invest in a company. And essentially what that means, and I'm just going to be honest with you, what it says on these things is how many black people work there, how many gay people work there, how many trans people work there. Yep. It's just filling in a fucking pie slice, man. Absolutely. It's I've not, seen this yeah. on actual web, websites before. That, oh, and oh, you yeah. can look up the Forbes five, Forbes Top 100 or whatever it is and see all their ESG scores in there. Uh-huh. Okay, now, uh, for a lot of this time, on the one hand, people are going, oh, these companies are finally starting to care about my thing that I like. <laughs> no, they don't. And secondly, people on the other side are going, oh, fuck these companies. They're evil. They're trying to... No, they're not. They're both not only just trying to make the most money that they possibly can, which is all I would ask corporations to do anyway, but secondly, maybe we aren't realizing how much pressure they're under in order to keep creating fucking capital. For instance, most recent S&P rating ranked Philip Morris above Tesla. Purely wow. because of their ESG score. Wow. Philip Morris is a company that there are literally campaigns of commercials against. Cigarette companies? Are you shitting me? Right. That's as hated as you can get in the United States. But they got that ESG score. They have score. that ESG score, so they rank higher as a safe investment than Tesla did this wow. week. Wow. And so what's actually happening here? So it turns out a couple of these guys have come forward to talk about it. These systems, what they do is if they want, they say, we have investment capital. You as a corporation here in the States, if you want our investment capital, you have to abide by these certain uh, laws and outlines. And that alone on itself is fine. If you're going to invest money, you want people to do what you think is going to make money. I get that. But I don't think that's what's happening here, man. I don't either. I don't either okay, want so these bit. investment companies are uh, telling these corporations that they have to. And I don't mean choose to. I mean have to. Oh, yeah. Take B-tier celebrities that went trans because they were fading out of relevance and give them huge ad contracts in order to sell their product, knowing full well that this is going to piss off their base audience. But why would you do this? Why? Huh? You why? Say, why, you say? Why, I say. Well... Let's take a look at the CEO from a company called BlackRock. Oh, if you don't know what BlackRock guys. is, you really should start paying a little more attention. Yeah. Okay, so the CEO from BlackRock, which is uh, one of the biggest companies in the States, right up there with Vanguard, State Street, these kind of investment firms. Oh, yeah. They touch your lives every, every day. Every day. And you Several don't times. even know it. Yep. That's right, man. That's right. And this guy said that we are going to force these companies to play along with what we think is the right thing to do. Otherwise, we won't invest in them. So just like Netflix out here with their little fucking category that says, ooh, lift up black voices that's full of a bunch of movies that are a bunch of hand-me-down second-tier white characters that they repainted so that predominantly white-owned Netflix can sell more subscriptions to their predominantly white audience and black people are supposed to fucking thank them for that? Nah, I don't that's think ridiculous. so. That's ridiculous. You're a step above minstrel show 
Windows, yep. you pieces of shit. Yep, yep. That's okay, so now the black man for the white man's gain, man. That's right, man. And so now here you've got the CEO of BlackRock saying the quiet part out loud that that's exactly what they're doing in order yep. to tell these companies what the, what to do. Knowing full well there will be big backlash in all kinds of directions if they try some of this. But why would you do that? Why would you do that? Well, Cespa 2, slow down. Well, <laughs> if you're if you're BlackRock and you have literally, and I'm not exaggerating, trillions, uh -huh. trillions at your disposal. Uh -huh. Companies like BlackRock are controlling your life every fucking day, man. Oh, yeah. And how do they keep doing this? Well, as you might know, they own a lot of the farmland here in the States. As you might also know, BlackRock owns a lot of the investment firms that own the home you live in right now. Yup. And in addition to that, these guys are now saying we want to get into commercial real estate. Hmm? Yup. And they're spinning it in a way that makes it look like they're helping the American people when what they're actually doing is filling their own pockets. Let's not shit ourselves. BlackRock and Vanguard are the predominant shareholders in Apple, Apple Microsoft, Microsoft, Amazon, Amazon Alphabet, Alphabet, Tesla, Tesla and IBM. And look at this. They're second tier in Coca-Cola, uh -huh. Pepsi, Frito, Hershey, Duke. Nestle. They control a majority share in almost every product that touches you every single day. And you they might say, how can they do this? Everything. Well, the way they do it is by fooling you, right? You think that you buy shares of these companies, but you buy them through these mutual funds and these index funds. And what that ends up meaning is that the shares you own, now the mutual fund that represents those shares gets your voting rights. Yeah. So if BlackRock runs mutual funds that sell shares to individuals, they suddenly have majority voting rights in the companies that shape our lives. Yeah. Which means BlackRock has the opportunity to tell Bud Light, hey, put that dude in a dress. Put that, put that Dylan Mulvey, put him on your beer kids. Do it. Do it because we fucking said so. Yep, because we don't give a shit if Bud Light sells a single beer for the next 10 nope. years. We don't give a shit. Nope. But if we can get it at pennies on the dollar, uh -huh. then in 11 years when it makes its big comeback, uh -huh. we make all the money. So it ain't just real estate. It ain't just food and drink. It's everything. Who owns the world's largest pharmaceutical companies? Well, you might be not surprised to know the three largest shareholders of Pfizer, Johnson & Johnson and Merck are Vanguard, Stage Street, and BlackRock. They own your drugs, they own your media, they own your house, they own your food, they own every fucking thing. Every fucking So imagine thing. you have trillions at your disposal, and you can put 50 million in front of Anheuser-Busch, and they think it's a good investment. Tell them to do whatever the fuck you want them to do, knowing it takes their company. Does that not mean that when their value goes down, that puts you in position to have used that investment to not only get shares at that time, but buy up that company for pennies on the dollar? They already did it with farms. They already did it with houses. Now they're coming for your consumable goods. So every single time they convince you that you're supposed to be mad at each other because of who's on a fucking beer can... What you're really doing with all of your rhetoric is you're putting money in the pockets of BlackRock, who did this on purpose. So I'm now taking bets. What's the over-under on how long it's going to take BlackRock Financial to buy AB InBev, the company that owns Anheuser-Busch?